Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at partial fractions. It's a great little skill, very useful, particularly for integration, which I'll look at in the next video. I'm going to use five examples today, increasing in difficulty. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper and do the work yourself alongside. Pause the video and rewind as you need to work at your own pace. There's also a challenge question at the end, so do have a go at that. I'd love to hear from you, so you can get in touch in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram, or you can go to my website, starfishmaths.com, for more information about online tuition. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. So let's start with our first example. Partial fractions is all about splitting up a fraction into some smaller fractions. So we want some factors on the bottom that we can split it up into. That will actually factorise, so let's just do that. So now these are the factors on the bottom and um, they can be the new denominators for some smaller fractions that we can split this up into. So we'll have something on the top of x minus 4 and something on the top of x plus 3. We don't know what those numerators are yet but we're going to work to find those out. So really we're just practicing splitting a fraction into some smaller pieces and this has um, a lot of really useful applications um, particularly when we integrate and we'll look at that in another video. So how are we going to find a and b? Um, the easiest way I think is to multiply everything on the left and the right hand side by the whole of that denominator there. So we'll just be left with 2x minus 1 on this side when we multiply by x squared minus x minus 12. Okay, when we multiply this right hand side, I'm just going to walk you through it um, in two steps, just this first one, just to convince you what you're left with. If we multiply by all of that, um, and we've got x minus 4 on the bottom there, this first fraction, then notice um, the x minus 4 will cancel on the top and the bottom, so we'll just be left with the x plus 3. Um, oops. And similarly, um, for this fraction, we'll cancel out the x plus 3 and just be left with x minus 4. So for all the others, I'm just going to um, go straight to this step of writing that other bracket on the top. So now, by multiplying everything, we're left with this equation here. The next step uh, that we can do is use some values of x to substitute in to create some equations. So uh, you can be clever with the values of x that you pick. If we choose, for example, minus 3, then that will make that whole thing uh, 0 and get rid of the a. So let's do that to start with. x is minus 3. So on this side here, we'll have 2 times minus 3 plus 1. So that will be minus 5. No, nope, minus 7. <laughs> Good maths. And here we'll have 0, which is what we want. Um, minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. B. So minus 7 equals minus 7b, that tells us that b is 1. Now we can pick another value of x, again let's pick wisely to make that 0 if we can. So x is 4. And we'll have 7 on the left here, and 7a plus 0. So again, a is 1. Nice easy example to start with. So by finding those out, we've now figured out that this fraction here can be written as 1 over x minus 4 plus 1 over x plus 3. A really good skill to have. Okay, let's have a go at a second example. Um, again, I'm going to start off by factorising the bottom. Hopefully you can spot how to do that. Do have a go. It's a difference of two squares. So again, I'm going to make that um, just with a and b to split that up at first. And again, like the previous example, I'm going to multiply by the whole denominator. Like I said, I've just skipped a step here. Hopefully you're okay with that. If you need to do it more slowly, do. Um, but you'll be left with those bits there. Let's choose some values of x. If I make x2, then that will get rid of that one. And then I'll have 4b. So that gives me that b is a half. And now I'm going to let x be minus 2. And 
the same thing that a is a half so if we want to rewrite that as the um, partial fractions then a being half we would just put that to one side of that um, factor there um, and do the same with b put the half like that great let's look at a slightly harder one now okay this time we're going to look at one with three factors on the bottom so it's the same sort of process just a little bit more to it so we're going to split that one up and I was kind I didn't make you <laughs> factorize that bottom I've just given it to you straight up um, but we're going to just use a b and c we don't know what they are yet and do the same process so do have a go multiplying through by the denominator so we'll be left with that and this time um, the x minus 3 would cancel, but we'd still have both of those factors up here. Alright, let's choose some values of x. Um, I'm going to start with 1 to get rid of that bit. Um, so that's b. Let's choose another value of x. Let's go with minus 2. c is minus 1 as well. And lastly I'll make x 3. super job so it's not too much harder hopefully doing three factors it's just a little bit more work those are the numerators I've run out of space but I'll just put them on the top here and of course we can pull that negative there at the front of the whole fraction and there we have it okay next example um, is a, a slightly harder one in that you just need to remember um, when it's factorised like this, when it's got a repeated factor, um, it could have a factor that's just x plus 2, but it could also have one with x plus 2 squared. So you've just got to remember to use both the, um, the factor and the factor squared, and then we've also got the x plus minus 3. And that's just really because we're looking for factors and we know that that's obviously a factor of that. So same again, and choosing some x values, until now I've always chosen x values that make stuff zero because um, that's the easiest thing to do. Um, now we've kind of run, up, run out of stuff that makes things zero, so we can choose any other value of x, whatever you like. I'm going to go with x is zero, because that's an easy one to substitute in. I'm just trying to break up my working um, to show you the steps by putting, um, when I substituted them in, I left them in brackets there just to walk you through it a little bit more so we'd have minus 6a but of course you could just go straight to this step if you're confident um, and I put in the values I've got from b and c I've put them in as well so either using your calculator you can bring those onto the left hand side or using your magical mind um, you get 6 over 5 so it's not that neat is it but it's okay minus a fifth all right, I'll put them back up at the top again. Okay, we're going to finish with an even harder question, uh, just to show you what to do. The reason why this one's different from the others is we've got two facts on the bottom, so that's nice and easy, straightforward. But um, notice that in the other examples up until now, it's just been um, very simple numerators, like very low order. I think they've just been numbers. Here we've got a numerator that's got the same order as the bottom and when I say order I mean the highest power of x is the same as the highest power of x on the bottom that would be a 3x squared so it's an x squared on top and an x squared on the bottom. What that means is that 
um, you can split this fraction into just a number first before you do the partial fractions. What I mean is it's, it's actually a top heavy or improper fraction. So what I do here is um, let's just multiply out that bottom to see what you get. What we're looking for is a number which multiplies with that bottom so that they would cancel out just leaving you with that number. So I've got to stay true to the highest order term, that 9x squared. So to get 9x squared it would have to be a 3 on the outside. Does that make sense? So 3 times 3x squared gives you 9x squared which matches that. The other terms aren't going to match, so we need to figure out what they'd be and adjust. So, so I'm just going to figure that out down here, multiplying that out. So this here is what we've got if we multiply that out. That's what we've got on the right hand side, but we want to have what we've got here, so we need to balance that out. We've got um, positive 15x, but we want positive 20x, so we need to add another 5x. We've got a minus 6, but we want a minus 10, so we need to take off another 4. Um, and these things as well will be over all of that jazz, over that same denominator. Just need to name that up. <laughs> so um, that and that ca would cancel out, leaving us with just 3. So what we've done is we've figured out we can take out a factor of a whole 3. And then we'd be left with this little bit, this residue, um, over that stuff. I'm going to write that again factorised because we want to move into partial fractions. So in fact, let's write that as partial fractions. So now the challenge is to write this bit as this. Um, I'll write that out to start with. 5x minus 4 over those things and that's the last bit of work we've got to do because I'm running out of space I'm just going to do the next step here so we're timesing by the denominator do you have a go and carrying on the same way as usual to make this one zero x is going to have to be a fraction so let's make it a third. Thank goodness for calculators, right? I love it when you end up with um, the same fraction, so it's actually nice and simple. You think for a second it's going to be horribly um, messy, but it actually comes out okay. Great, so that's that done. And we can put that back. So we found that A is 2 and b is minus 1, so that there is a beautifully split up version of what we started with. So the twist here was having the number at the front, just to remind you it was looking at how to make the 9x squared, so the dominant term, so we needed to multiply it by 3 and then we found the other bits by adjusting, by expanding that out and seeing what else we needed. So do keep practicing that. Depending on what um, exam you're looking at doing, you might get this kind of question, you might not. So just check that out, um, whether you need to practice that or not. I always say in my videos, please do keep practicing. So get lots and lots of different practice questions and do have a go, keep on practicing. But um, here's a practice question for you to have a go at. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you figure it out. What are the values of A, B and C? and I will get the answer to you at some point, but have a go first. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.